Hi friends, once again back to biologyexamsforyou.com. Today the topic of our discussion is difference between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, two most important reactions that is responsible for life on this planet. Let's move into the detail. Difference number one regarding occurrence and site of reaction. As you all know, cellular respiration takes place in all organisms, in plants, animals, fungus, bacteria, all living cells, irrespective of whether it is chlorophyllated or non-chlorophyllated. And the organelle involved is mitochondrion. This is an animal cell and this is a mitochondrion. Majority of the energy is synthesized in mitochondrion. That's why it is called as powerhouse of the cell. And the process takes place both in dark and light and it is a process that is happening 24-7 for deriving energy for all cellular activities. Whereas photosynthesis takes place only in chlorophyllated cells or green plants. So chloroplast is required for photosynthesis. This is plant cell and you can see this is a chloroplast. And chloroplast is the organelle that is involved in photosynthesis. And light is essential for photosynthesis to convert the light energy, the energy of the sunlight into chemical energy. So light is essential for photosynthesis. Difference number two regarding the equation. First of all, let us start with the synthetic process that is photosynthesis. And this is the equation. Carbon dioxide combines with water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll forming glucose, water and oxygen. Oxygen is a major byproduct. So in this process, glucose is synthesized. Therefore, the process is called as anabolic process. And the process is endothermic as energy from the sunlight is absorbed by the plant and converted to chemical energy. During the process, oxygen is liberated that is utilized by all organisms for cellular respiration and carbon dioxide is the reactant in the process. So let's take the equation of cellular respiration. In cellular respiration, this is a catabolic process or this glucose that is synthesized during photosynthesis is oxidized or broken down into carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy in the form of ATP that drives all cellular activities. And this process is an exothermic process as energy is released. Here oxygen, the byproduct released by photosynthesis is utilized and carbon dioxide, the reactant of photosynthesis is released. So these two processes thus form a cycle that is responsible for life on this planet. Reactant of one process becomes the product of other process and vice versa. Difference number three, steps involved. In cellular respiration, there are three steps, glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm. It's an anaerobic universal process that is happening in all organisms bacteria from bacteria to all other organisms where glucose is broken down to form two pyruvate molecule. In the second step this pyruvate enters mitochondria becomes becomes acetyl coenzyme A. Inside the mitochondrial matrix it enters citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle forming NADH and FADH2 along with some ATP. Then the third step that is happening in inner mitochondrial membrane where this NADH and FADH2 donate electrons and during the electron flow through different protein complexes the energy is utilized to pump electron and to create a gradient in the inner membrane space once the proton moves through the ATP synthase in electron transport chain that drives the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So majority of ATP is synthesized during electron transport chain. Whereas glycolysis there is only two ATP in citric acid cycle direct formation is only two ATP. 
So one glucose yields approximately 36 ATP out of which 32 are synthesized during electron transport chain or by the oxidation of NADH and FADH2. Whereas in photosynthesis, light reaction, there are two reactions, light reaction and dark reaction. Light reaction occurs in the grana of the chloroplast and this is called as grana. Each individual units are called thylakoid. Light reaction actually occurs on the thylakoid membrane where pigments and photosystems are located that absorbs light energy and convert that light energy in the form of chemical energy as ATP and NADPH. During dark reaction, this ATP and NADPH, this energy is utilized for fixing carbon dioxide to carbohydrate fixing carbon dioxide to carbohydrate or sugar and that occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. Difference number four regarding ATP synthesis, the mode of ATP synthesis. In cellular respiration, the energy for ATP synthesis is derived by oxidation of NADH and FADH2. ATP is formed by the transfer of electrons from NADH and FADH2 to oxygen by a series of electron carriers. This is a mitochondrial outer membrane and this is a mitochondrial inner membrane and this space is called as intermembrane space and this is a mitochondrial matrix. So after Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, there is NADH and FADH2. This NADH and FADH2 donate electrons and that is moved through different protein complexes and moved through different electron carriers. During the movements from high energy to low energy state, energy is released and that energy is used to pump protons from this matrix side to the intermembrane space. Then there will be a gradient formation or difference in number of protons in the intermembrane space and matrix. The only way out for this proton to maintain an equilibrium is through ATP synthase. This is the ATP synthase. And once a proton moves through ATP synthase, this proton drives the synthesis of ATP from ADP and PI. The energy generated by proton movement is called as PMF or proton motive force. So ATP synthesis or phosphorylation or phosphorylation is primarily by the oxidation of NADH and FADH2 or the energy is derived by the oxidation of NADH and FADH2 that is why it is called as oxidative phosphorylation. Whereas in the case of photosynthesis the primary source of energy for the conversion of or the formation of ATP is from the sunlight. It is a sunlight driven process or synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So this is the thylakoid membrane where photosystems are located and uh, this is stromal region and this is thylakoid lumen. Light energy is received by these photosystems or pigment system and that travel through the electrons travel through different electron carriers and the proton is pumped into the thylakoid space or lumen thus forming a proton gradient and finally this proton in order to make an equilibrium it should move through ATP synthase. The only way out is ATP synthase. Once this proton moves through ATP synthase that energy is used to phosphorylate ADP to ATP. So the energy for synthesis of ATP in photosynthesis is derived from sunlight therefore phosphorylation is called as photophosphorylation. So we have discussed these two words in detail in one of our videos. And finally the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration the reason for the life on this planet. So photosynthesis ultimate source of energy in an ecosystem is from the sunlight. The energy from the sunlight is trapped or captured by green plants often on the leaves or green parts and that is converted to glucose that is converted to glucose 
which is the energy source for all organisms directly or indirectly releasing oxygen and this oxygen helps all organisms for cellular respiration for oxidizing glucose to release energy for driving all cellular activities so after cellular respiration this carbon dioxide and water is released once again this carbon dioxide is utilized for photosynthesis so this is the cycle of life photosynthesis and cellular respiration represents the cycle of life on this planet and that's it Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com. Thank you so much for your support once again.